In Santa Clara at Levi Stadium, I'm Courtney Cronin. He's Kim Inman for the Bay Area News Group. The 49ers dropped their third preseason game 21-10 to the Green Bay Packers. We saw all four quarterbacks finally in the preseason. Is there a specific one you want to talk about? I think so. I think we want to talk about Christian Ponder and the fact that this may have been the last oh. time that we've seen him. No, we're not going to do that. We're, we'll be maybe, nice. We'll, maybe it was the last time we see Colin Kaepernick. It's very, that is very true. Colin Kaepernick, two of six for 14 yards, an identical 14 yards. That was also thrown by Blaine Gabbard, yeah, two, of three, two of three. Two of three passing. We talked about this in face, on Facebook Live earlier about how long we'd both we thought but we'd get to see both quarterbacks out there. Is that about what you thought for both, or did you? I thought we'd see a little bit more Colin Kaepernick, considering this was the first time his first preseason action, his first action since November of 2015. I think we should have seen more Colin Kaepernick. I mean, they are, they only have one quarter and three series to judge him on now. And uh, what we saw was not great or good. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't terrible, but uh, he, he looked a little indecisive. He's, he said he wasn't rusty, but it looked like he was not quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, he, he got out of the pocket a couple times where I thought he could have stayed in there mm -hmm. and attempted a pass. And I think, you know, this is the first time he's been in a game in like 10 months. Yeah. Something like that, nine or 10 months. And uh, he, he's... I don't see if there's any chance that he wins a starting job because Blaine Gabbard is not going to play in the exhibition finale the way they've they've set this up where he's started at each exhibition game to this point. Uh, each time he's left with the Costanza, I'm going out on a high note. I threw a touchdown <laughs> or I had a touchdown drive. I'm gone, uh, which is the coach's call. And I think that's how they want this competition to be, that this is Blaine's team. We're going to give Colin a look-see. And I, I, I would think Colin's probably going to start the exhibition finale at San Diego on Friday. Is it Friday or Thursday? Next Thursday. But overall, I think this competition is done. Like I said, mm -hmm. before the exhibition season started, it's Gabbert's team. Uh, Colin's trying his darndest to get healthy, and he said the arm's feeling strong. And uh, if it wasn't as strong, that first pass he threw would have gotten intercepted mm -hmm. for a pick six probably because it was an yeah. out route out on the corner little delayed and the cornerback was kind of caught his feet and wasn't ready for it so uh, and then his final three passes were batted down yeah uh, not a good sign mm -hmm. the arm strength was there which I don't know if that was the biggest question but how quickly he could get the ball off was a serious concern um, just from how you gauge those six passes that he had in Chip Kelly's offense does that bode well does that bode better for Blaine Gabbert considering he does have a quicker release even though that's never been characteristic of Colin Kaepernick Blaine seems a lot more comfortable with it now, it's, now here's the thing so Blaine only had two of three passes right mm -hmm. well that the one he missed was a big miss yeah and I mean he's not he didn't really bring it up as much. He, he said he wanted that they could have made that pass. Uh, he, he overthrew Quentin Patton on about a 35, 40-yard pass. Patton was wide open in the end zone. He's got to hit that pass in the regular mm -hmm. season. That Those chances come up once or twice a game, and he's going to know that he should have hit it. And uh, I, I don't think it was the receiver was at fault because he was open on the play. So if Blaine hits that pass, everybody's going, oh, this is great. We got our starting quarterback. He didn't, so now that's everybody's going, Wow, is this really it's the mm -hmm. you know the best of two worlds kind of thing. Yeah. So. How big of an issue is the wide receiver depth right now? We haven't talked about it much, but when you take a look at the injuries, you've got Bryce Treggs, Bruce Ellington who gets injured tonight, wow. DeAndre Smelter, and to top it off, we haven't even seen Torrey Smith do anything in the preseason, right. not necessarily to a fault of his own. He's been running up and down the sideline. He's been open a lot of times. But what's the, you know, how big of a point of concern is this? Well, I got a lot more pressing right now. Bruce Ellington has a hamstring injury, was instantly ruled out of the game. Mm -hmm. Bruce has an injury history, which is not great in his two seasons here. And they are counting on him more than they ever have in his career. And he's their slot receiver. And in Chip Kelly's offense, he stands to be very productive. Uh, but if he's not on the field, that means they're going to have to go next down the line, which is DeAndre White, mm -hmm. uh, who's a second year uh, player out of Alabama, was undrafted last year, made the team. And he's got a golden opportunity right now to step in. Uh, Bruce has injury issues. Uh, and in the National Football League, every week's a car crash. And, and if he's not going to be able to sustain it, that they're gonna, that's going to be a, a big concern for this receiving core that, like you said, not a lot of guys have stepped up to make plays. I don't know how many options they're getting to make those plays um, because they're changing the offense in and out mm -hmm. so much. The coaching staff has a much better idea of these guys than we do because they see them in practice every day and um, some guys, everybody has their moments back and forth. 
and they just want somebody consistently to make the plays. Outside of the first preseason game where Thad Lewis went down with a torn ACL, the 49ers have been lucky to get out of their preseason games relatively healthy <laughs> until today. tonight. A uh, lot of injuries to the defense, most notably Quinton Dial with the MCL sprain that you reported earlier. Well, here's the thing. So we found out after the game that Carlos Hyde has a concussion. Okay. Um, and we didn't know that during the game. It was not announced. He came out after the first quarter. He had a 27-yard run down to the three-yard line. And that could be big time. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, he's in the league protocol now, not the, not the 49ers. He was the first one out of the locker room, and he was escorted by a public relations official probably taking him somewhere. I thought he was going to a radio show. I thought he was, too. I, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, the, the, the league announced that he was uh, he's now, in, or the team announced he's now in the league protocol. And uh, so that's worth watching. Now, the Quentin Dial thing, a couple weeks maybe. Uh, Eric Reed hurt his thumb. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, you know, how is that going to affect him? Is he going to have to have a cast if it's broken or dislocated? Uh, Mike Purcell was one that got hurt. Eli Harold came out briefly. Uh, I asked him if he had the wind knocked out of him again. That's what it sounded like, but he did not want to discuss it and said he'll survive. So that's always good. And, uh, yeah, they were they were going down fast there in I think the second quarter. Mm -hmm. So, so it's pretty much proves that the preseason A is too long and B needs to end. And and see that the football is a brutal game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, that's going to do it for us from Levi Stadium. Be sure to check out all of our 49ers coverage over at MercuryNews.com. For Cam Inman, I'm Courtney Cronin. Thanks for watching.